In today's video, I'm going to provide you with a step-by-step -step approach to answering the following interview question, what is your greatest weakness? I'll also provide you with eight weaknesses you can use right now during your interview. Great, let's jump right in. So, what interviewers want to know? First, the weakness you mentioned will help the hiring manager determine if you are a good fit for the role. You have to understand that some weaknesses may impact a job role more than others. So you have to be careful which one you mention. Next, this question helps hiring managers understand your level of self-awareness. When you understand your weakness, only then can you improve on it. Hiring managers are looking for employees who acknowledge their weaknesses and take steps to address them, showing a commitment to personal and professional development. Finally, two more reasons hiring managers ask a candidate about their greatest weakness is to understand how well they approach challenges. For example, from your response, the hiring manager can learn how you overcame or managed your weakness, which is a great way to show your problem-solving skills. Those candidates who can provide thoughtful, genuine answers may stand out more than those who give universal, non-original responses. How to answer this question? The goal is to not mention a weakness that would make you unsuitable for the job. It's better to mention a weakness that won't make you unfit for the job role. Then, demonstrate self-awareness, the ability to learn and grow, and how you manage your weaknesses. So, number one, select a weakness that is not directly related to the essential skills and qualifications required for the job. It should also be something you have genuinely worked on improving. Here's an example of how you can do this. Open the job description and scroll down to the section that mentions the key skills and experience for this job role. Make sure when answering the interview question, what is your greatest weakness? You don't mention anything listed here in this section. Why? Well, if you lack any of these key skills, then you're a candidate who is no longer a strong match for this position. Number two, start your answer by acknowledging the weakness. For example, you can say, one area where I've noticed I can improve is, explain the steps you've taken or are taking to overcome this weakness. Share specific examples of actions you've taken. This demonstrates your commitment to self-improvement and your proactive approach. Number three, discuss the progress you've made in addressing this weakness and how it has positively impacted your performance or growth. Mention how you view your weaknesses as opportunities for personal and professional development. This shows that you're open to learning and adapting. Now, here are eight high converting weaknesses you can use in every type of job interview. With each one, I'll provide a sample answer you can use. Just remember to customize it, adding your own key skills and work experience. Let's get started. Here's weakness number one, that you struggle with public speaking. This is a fantastic weakness to give in an interview because it's a common challenge many people face. It's not typically a main requirement for most jobs, except for those which are focused on public speaking. Also, public speaking is a skill that can always be improved regardless of how good someone is at it currently. It does not directly impact most job responsibilities, especially if the job role is not heavily focused on regular public presentations. Here's a fantastic sample answer. One area I'm actively working to improve is my confidence in public speaking and presenting. Early in my career, I found myself hesitating to speak up in large meetings or struggling with nerves during presentations. I recognize that effective communication is key in any professional setting and I've been taking steps to improve this skill. First, I enrolled in a public speaking course, which has been important in helping me understand the fundamentals of effective communication. This course provided practical tips on organizing thoughts, engaging the audience, and managing anxiety, which I've been applying in team meetings and presentations. I've also been seeking opportunities at work to present or lead discussions. This hands-on experience is helping me become more comfortable in front of an audience. I've found that continuous practice and getting constructive feedback from colleagues are gradually building my confidence. Even though I still find public speaking challenging, the steps I am taking to improve have made a difference in building my confidence and adding a level of comfort whenever I have to make a presentation. 
I am committed to continuing this journey as I believe becoming a more confident speaker will significantly enhance my professional effectiveness. Weakness number two, that you have difficulty delegating tasks. This is another effective weakness to give during your job interview because it shows your commitment and responsibility, but also highlights an area for personal development, which is crucial in many job roles. Using this weakness also suggests that you take your duties seriously and are committed to ensuring that work is done well. Many professionals struggle with delegation and it is seen as a skill that can be improved. So when you mention this weakness, you can describe the steps you are taking to improve. Here's a sample answer. One area I'm actively working on is my difficulty with delegating tasks. In my previous roles, I often found myself taking on a significant workload because I wanted to ensure the highest quality of work and meet deadlines efficiently. I understand how this does show my commitment to my work, but also realize that effective delegation is crucial for team success and personal growth. To work on this, I've been taking steps to improve my delegation skills. I started by acknowledging that my team members have valuable skills and can handle responsibilities effectively. To build trust, I began assigning smaller tasks initially, observing how they manage these responsibilities and providing constructive feedback. Gradually, I increased which tasks I delegated to the team, with some being very complex because I have built up the confidence in my team to handle them and complete them to the highest quality possible. Recently, I have started to read books on leadership and have also attended workshops on team management to learn effective delegation strategies. These resources have been important in helping me understand the importance of empowering team members and trusting their capabilities. I am proud to say that improving my delegation skills has not only helped in reducing my workload but also in fostering a more collaborative and trusting team environment. It's an ongoing process, but I'm committed to becoming a more effective leader by learning to balance my direct involvement with empowering my team. Weakness number three, that you have a hard time letting go. This also means that you are deeply committed and invested in your work. This is a great weakness to use during an interview because it highlights your commitment to quality and your thorough approach to tasks. By saying you have a difficult time letting go of projects, you are letting the hiring manager know that you hold yourself to the highest standards when it comes to your work. Interviewers value a candidate who strives for excellence and is not satisfied with mediocre results. Here's a fantastic sample answer. One area where I've noticed I can improve is that I sometimes have a hard time letting go of projects or tasks. I'm the type of person who's deeply committed to excellence and often find myself double-checking or revisiting work to ensure it meets the highest standards. While this trade has helped me produce quality work, I've realized that it can also lead to a delay in team progress. I have been actively working on trusting my initial work and that of my team. I've also started setting clear deadlines for myself to finalize tasks and resist the urge to revisit completed work unless absolutely necessary. I have been working on improving my delegation skills. I realize by trusting my colleagues and respecting their expertise, I'm learning to let go and rely on the team's collective strength. I helped me further, I implemented a feedback system where I regularly ask for input from my colleagues and supervisors. This not only helps me understand the quality of my work more realistically but also provides different insight which guides my decision making process. I'm proud to say that these steps are helping me balance my attention to detail with efficiency and teamwork, making me a more adaptable and collaborative professional. Weakness number four, that you have a hard time saying no. Everyone enjoys helping colleagues, but sometimes taking on too much than you can handle can reduce productivity and the quality of your work. Hiring managers respect someone who goes out of their way to help people because it shows your dedication. But if you are someone who doesn't know your limit, then this ends up causing delays and you will be the one needing help completing your work. But the good news is this is something which can be improved quickly and will not hurt your chances of landing the job. Make sure in your answer that you describe to the interviewer how you're working to better self-manage by organizing your tasks and setting more realistic expectations with yourself as well as those around you. Here's a sample answer. One of my challenges has been the difficulty in saying no. 
I have a strong desire to be helpful and involved in different projects. Also, being involved in various projects has allowed me to gain a wide range of experiences and be a reliable team member. But I realize that it can also lead to overcommitment and decreased work quality due to spreading myself too thin. To deal with this, I've been actively working on setting boundaries and prioritizing tasks more effectively. I started by evaluating my workload and identifying tasks that align most with my strengths and the team's objectives. This has helped me understand where my efforts are most impactful and where it might be better to delegate or decline additional responsibilities. I've also been working on my communication skills so I can express myself more clearly when I'm not able to take on more work. I've noticed by being more transparent about my workload, I can ask for a deadline extension if needed and even ask for him if something is due urgently. This approach not only benefits my productivity but also ensures the quality of my work remains high. Recently, I enrolled in time management and communication training to further develop these skills. These workshops have been important in providing me with strategies to manage my workload and communicate more effectively. Weakness number five. Sometimes you lack patience. This is a fantastic weakness to use in an interview because having a lack of patience will not hinder your ability to complete your work. You can add to this by saying that you are incredibly self-sufficient, so you find it hard when you need to rely on others to complete your work. Here's a sample answer. My biggest weakness is that I sometimes lack patience when working in a team. This happens because I like to get things done quickly and to a high standard. But I know that everyone works differently and not everyone is as fast or thinks the same way I do. To get better at this, I am learning to be more patient and understand how others work. First, I am trying to be more aware of when I get impatient. Knowing this helps me stop and think before I react. I also listen more to my team members. This helps me see their points of view and ideas. It makes me realize that different ways of working can also be good. These activities help me get to know my team better. I learn what they are good at and how they do things. This helps me see that everyone has something valuable to offer. By working on this, I am becoming better at being part of a team. I am learning that being patient can actually help us do better work together. It's important to share this weakness in an interview because it shows I know what I need to work on and what I am trying to improve. It also shows that I value teamwork and want to be a good team player. Weakness number six, knowing the difference between working hard and working productively. Using this weakness is very safe because it does not hinder your ability to perform your job. I can guarantee you that interviewers have not heard a candidate say this before. Someone who does not know the difference between working hard and working productively just needs to understand when in the day they are most productive. Here's a fantastic sample answer. One area where I've noticed I can improve is sometimes not understanding the difference between working hard and working productively. I used to think that staying busy and doing a lot of things meant I was doing a good job, but I have learned that just being busy doesn't always mean I am doing the most important work. To improve this, I am trying to plan my work better. I make a list of what needs to be done and decide which tasks are the most important. This helps me focus on doing work that really matters and not just work that keeps me busy. I also started to take short breaks during the day. This might seem like I am working less, but these breaks help me think better and work smarter when I am working. Another thing I do is ask for feedback from my boss and team. They help me see if I am spending too much time on things that are not as important. Their advice helps me learn how to be more productive. By working on this, I am getting better at knowing what work is most important. This helps me do a better job. Sharing this weakness in an interview is good because it shows that I understand the difference between just working hard and working smart. It also shows that I am always trying to improve how I work. Weakness number seven. Prioritize work perfection over efficiency. This is another great unique weakness to give in an interview because this weakness does not hinder your ability to complete your work. In fact, work perfection means you take pride in the quality of work you submit and prefer not to rush through projects. Hiring managers respect employees who focus on quality because it leads to higher customer satisfaction and retention in the long run. However, sometimes taking too long to submit projects may delay team progress and you might miss deadlines. But the good news is this is a weakness you can improve on. So in your answer, detail the steps you are taking to overcome and improve efficiency while maintaining quality standards. Here's a sample answer. 
One area I've been actively working on is my tendency to prioritize work perfection over efficiency. My commitment to delivering flawless work often led me to spend extra time fine-tuning details, even when they were already at a high standard. While this has ensured the quality of my projects, I realized it sometimes impacted my time management and overall productivity. To address this, I've adopted a more balanced approach. I started by clearly defining what good enough looks like for different types of tasks. This involves setting realistic standards and distinguishing between tasks that require exceptional attention to detail and those where a broader approach is more appropriate. It's about understanding the point of diminishing returns and focusing my perfectionist tendencies where they add the most value. Furthermore, I've been leveraging project management tools and techniques to organize and prioritize my workload better. These tools help me set more structured timelines and break tasks into manageable parts, making it easier to monitor my progress and avoid over-deliberation. I've also sought feedback from my colleagues and supervisors to get a broader perspective on my work quality. Their input helps me gauge when a piece of work is complete and meets the required standards, enabling me to move on to other tasks more efficiently. This weakness, I believe, is valuable to discuss because it stems from a positive trait, my dedication to quality. By actively working on balancing this with efficiency, I'm not only improving my productivity but also learning to contribute more effectively in a fast-paced work environment. It demonstrates my ability to self-reflect, adapt, and continuously strive for both personal and professional growth. And finally, weakness number eight, that you take on too many responsibilities at once. This is a great weakness to use in an interview because it shows your high commitment to your work and willingness to go above and beyond to ensure success. It also indicates a strong work ethic and dedication. Hiring managers view this as a positive weakness because it indicates that you are not afraid of challenges and are willing to take the initiative. Also, many people struggle with balancing their workload, so this weakness is relatable and understandable. When answering this question, don't forget to mention the steps you are taking to improve on this weakness. Here's a sample answer. I would say one area I have to improve is my tendency to take on too many responsibilities at once. Initially, this was due to my enthusiasm for new challenges and eagerness to contribute to team success. While this trait has allowed me to develop a diverse skill set and demonstrate my commitment, I've realized that it can lead to overextension and impact my ability to deliver each task with optimal focus and efficiency. To manage this, I've been consciously working on improving my time management and prioritization skills. I've started using project management tools to better organize my tasks and set realistic deadlines. This approach has helped me visualize my workload and allocate my time more effectively, ensuring that I can focus on each task without compromising quality. I've been learning to delegate appropriately. By trusting in the abilities of my colleagues and empowering them to take on responsibilities, I'm not only managing my workload better but also fostering a collaborative team environment. I've also sought mentorship and feedback from supervisors to gain insights into how to balance my enthusiasm for taking on work with the need to maintain quality and manage stress. Their guidance has been invaluable in helping me understand the importance of saying no or negotiating deadlines when necessary. If you want to learn more on how to land jobs and reach your career goals, don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button to get new videos every single week. Also, don't forget to hit that like button because that motivates me to keep doing what I do. Stay safe, keep smiling, and good luck.